to Ireland, to the Republic. And uh, this has been a very, very fruitful visit. We went up to, like Marie said, we were in Belfast for the past couple days, and um, it was my first time to Northern Ireland, so yeah. it was great. The people who um, had so, you know, I don't even, it, when I look at the people who brought peace to Northern Ireland and, and the absence of the British, most of the British military and and uh, at the end of the armed struggle, I don't even, I can't even, you know, be in the same room with those people <laughs> if you're gonna talk about brave people. And so it was really inspiring. A lot of times, you know, I travel the world and it's very draining to, to do what I do because it, it seems like we as activists give a lot more than um, oftentimes we receive. And But to go and to be inspired by um, people here and, and in the North was, was it, it's very energizing. We got back from a two-day exhausting trip where we drove from Dub Dublin to Belfast and then Belfast to Derry, Derry to Belfast, not in the same day, <laughs> three days doing this, and then from Belfast back down to Dublin and got home last, back to um, where I'm staying last night, I don't know, like 6.30 or 7-ish, something like that. I couldn't sleep. I didn't go sleep till 5 o'clock in the morning. I was exhausted, but I was so energized and filled with you know, ideas and hope and, um, you know, satisfaction, satisfaction that that uh, we are doing good, especially around the case. We have been able to talk about the case to a lot of very um, influential people and on the media, been able to, to tell the case, about the case to people who might not know the case of the human five. So it's been very, very wonderful. And before I go too far, I'd like to wish all the women here a very um, happy, although it's almost over, International Working Women's Day. A lot of time people leave out the working part. And I like to be outside of the US almost any day, but <laughs> <laughs> to be outside of it on International Working Women's Day is particularly special because even though this day originated in the United States. It was uh, you know, started by the Socialist Party of the United States. We don't really pay attention too much to it in the United States. So it's always good to be someplace that has a real good, tr we should have a good tradition, but we don't. So anyway, especially to the women, um, welcome and, and happy day to you. So I hope you had a happy one. The very first thing, we went to Munster House and um, Maureen O'Sullivan sponsored a very good talk there uh, up for me. And we had David Norris, senator, who's a friend of mine. We had three senators from Finna, Finna Fall um, come and um, Finian, Finian, um, Richard Boyd Barrett, I saw him after. He's been a friend of mine. David Norris and Richard Boyd Barrett have been friends of mine here. They, I met them on my first trip here in 2005. So, And then a lot of other people came to the event. It was a really good event at Leinster House. And so we, we met Maureen O'Sullivan, who is a one, another wonderful I woman. Did, I didn't know anything. I never heard, heard one, one mention of the Cuban Five in the United States until I went to the World Social Forum in Caracas, Venezuela in 2006. And this was shortly after my camp out in front of George Bush's ranch. And so I was invited down to Caracas to go to the World Social Forum. And um, there, one of the first things I did was meet with the mothers and the wives and the children of the five. And then the, the International Committee, I believe it was the International Committee, sponsored this big banner <coughs> with the five hero spaces on it that they hung from a hotel in Caracas. And so that's the first time I um, had heard of the case. And of course I was very sympathetic 
to them and sympathetic to um, their quest for um, the return of their loved ones to back to Cuba. How much I talk, no matter how uh, much I travel, there's no, there's nothing I could do that would bring my son back. But the the um, Cuban families of the Cuban Five have hope; they can see their son. I think how bad would it be for my son to just be barely 90 miles away or you know, <coughs> other places and not be able to, to see them or, or have them at home to celebrate um, holidays and to help be with a brother who's dying you know, and help his, his mother and family to, get, to go through that. But my son gave me a necklace. Um, right after he joined the military. On the back it says, to mom with love. And it's my most treasured prized possession. Like David Norris said today, you wouldn't be able to sell it to get much, much actual monetary value for it, but it's priceless. You can't put a value on the emotional, the, the emotion. But it, then again, I was always worried I was gonna lose it. You know, one time I thought I lost it. And my youngest daughter was like, Mom, you just lost a necklace. You didn't lose Casey. You didn't lose his memory. You didn't lose all of you know, the, the good times that you had together. You just lost a thing. And so that kind of put everything into perspective. But I decided when I first got there that if I was able to do it, that I would present my necklace to them. I thought that I would give my necklace to them and tell them that they could keep it until their sons came um, back to Cuba. And I didn't know I could do it. I really thought, oh, I'm not going to be able to do it. You know, I'm not going to be able to give this, this up. But in the end, I did. And it, I called them up to where I was speaking, and I presented it to them. And um, it just makes me work harder. It gives me more of a commitment to uh, come to Ireland to or do what I can for the US committee to free the five because seriously what we need to do in the United States is just let people know about the case and me being here we're, we're able to uh, raise awareness here in Ireland but it's also raising awareness in the United States especially when the right-wing media picks it up and starts calling you things like traitor and you know, all those good things. But even if they're talking about you, at least they're talking about you, right? <laughs> and, you know, P.T. Barnum, Barnum said, uh, publicity is not measured in content, it's measured in inches. So if they start talking about me being a trader of Cuban 5, you know, that starts to, people might say, hey, what, what the heck is a Cuban 5? And so, um, That's why I work so hard for them. Not only do I want the five, you know, four of them to go to prison, five of them to return to Cuba, but I, this case is also a good case to highlight the hypocrisy of um, the United States of America. <coughs> you know, my son supposedly died fighting terrorism when the Cuban Five are anti-terrorist fighters, campaigners, and um, they're being imprisoned instead of um, being celebrated. They're, they're in prison. Where, and, and another thing that highlights is, you know, I believe the United States is the biggest terrorist organization in the world. And here they, they have the nerve to illegally um, imprison uh, other people who are fighting against what we say that we that we um, do also, so this like kills a lot of birds all you know with one stone for me. I get to help Cuba, I get to help the Cuban Five, and I get to criticize my government. And those are those are things that are my favorite things to do. <laughs> but, I mean, my government could actually quit doing things that I, you know, so easy to criticize. You know, they're such an easy uh, institution to criticize. And um, 
I know that, that that's only one aspect of the things that I do and the things that you might find interesting. And so I think that um, we have like plenty of time now to have a discussion. I, have, I just have to remind that um, Cindy has to be out of here by about quarter past seven because she has she's going to another Amnesty International event in Trinity College. Mm -hmm. So um, do you want to ask her which question? <coughs> no. Sure, we can do questions. <coughs> we can do questions, thanks.